Oh, it was there the whole time. That was Invisible Girl. Cool. It's weird how you don't notice things until you know they're there. My Hair Academia, Season 7, Episode 4. We should look at this as a new advantage. Given the state of affairs, Aoyama's the only God, this was a lifeline. can trick all for one. <sighs> Why? At least you have something to hope for in jail. Yeah, it makes it worse, right? That they're this great and you're not. Yet. I know I'm a terrible person. It's tough. Having this conversation feels like I'm splitting hairs. I do understand the reasoning behind the language we use about being a good person being a bad person. I don't think generalizations are unimportant, especially dealing with other people. We don't know the full picture. We don't always want to stick around for the full picture. Life is fast. Life is complex. We have to make decisions based on the evidence we have. But there are practical situations where it's important to have an assessment of someone at a snapshot. And, you know, that's the utility of labels like good person, bad person, etc. But, like, if you really want to understand if the understanding is important, there is no such thing as a good person or a bad person. Thinking about it that way as this sort of overall aura or class cloud that possesses a person's spirit for the duration of their lives as a categorical unchangeable definition is not complete and goes wrong if it then undercuts any chance the person might have of actually doing good things. Because that's probably more accurate to what it is, right? It's people having done things that are wrong. There are a lot of things that that doesn't speak to. I personally believe that one can be held fully accountable for their actions while also being sympathetic. In Ayama's case, as much as I think he is responsible and as much as I don't like his actions, I do understand where he's coming from. I do understand his fear. It also doesn't speak to what comes next. As I said last episode, a person is not just a collection of all the points in their timeline. There are all the things left to come that they can still do. The potential is infinite compared to their past, which is finite. It's kind of like making a drawing. Your past is the trace your pencil leaves. The future is like whatever you could draw from here and out. Maybe you made a bad line, you know, but you can still draw the picture. It's kind of cheesy, but this becomes especially important when you try to apply this to yourself. Like you are not a bad person for having done terrible, maybe horrific things. That is your history that informs your life. It is something you must carry and think about. You must at least use it to inform yourself that you are capable of things you didn't want to think you were capable of. You are also what you are thinking now, what you are doing now, and everything you will think or do next. There is no label curse. I think we perpetuate the label curses on ourselves deliberately as a sort of escape from what we know to be possible. To avoid the gravity and weight of things like oh, I'm realizing how amazing people can be. It's also a way of trying to find a simple answer that you can comprehend because at least that gives you a feeling of comfort and control in the face of what seems like an insurmountable problem. But an identity one way or the other is not the answer. I hate to point this out, but you know, you're the ones who are hurt most by his actions. Do you really want to trust an admitted traitor? To be fair, it also doesn't mean they have to trust them or take him back. That is up to them. It's a different decision to make. But of course they will. None of us noticed how tortured he was. So we have to take some responsibility too. <laughs> He's our classmate. And he's wow. sitting in front of us weeping this like outlook. the epitome of despair. Maximal responsibility. We care. And we want to redeem him. Damn, Ida. And now, Yama, you gotta remember. No one cared that Midoriya was born quirkless. We didn't turn on him, even though he was hiding his tears from us just like you. <laughs> it's just so weird. It's so bizarre. It's so painful. The better they are, the more it hurts, if that makes sense. These are the people you did this to, but I think you just have to accept it. Like, yeah, just eat that. It's gonna suck, but time does work in your favor really well. You can get out of this pit of despair. You need the time to build the track record back to yourself, not least of all. Ayama, meddling when you don't have to is the essence of being a hero. You're still <laughs> one of us. All right, meddling is our motto. There are still protocols we have to follow. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you might, right now yeah, we need in jail. To fully cooperate with our investigation. Bomb, etc. I understand how you must be feeling, but we can't be rash. Midoriya. What? I suggested we could lure out all for one. I don't suppose you Oh! Have an plan. He lives. As Class A's homeroom teacher, I also bear the blame for what's happened. And I feel the same way my students do. Not a surprise. I have no intention of expelling you from UA. Use your chance. Can you make absolutely sure that the Aoyamas won't be able to hear what I have to say? Sure. <sighs> the parents still feel like a liability. I don't know. I understand. It feels good to have we'll Aizawa to just back in the room. Thoroughly. In a way. If the elements fall into place, this could work. Yes. Mm, I'm watching you. <laughs> Obviously, the only people at UA who should know anything about this are those in the room with us. This will be okay! Eventually. It won't be okay for a while. Then it might be okay. Guys, let's make sure we beat them. Yeah. She's taking more of a role in this group. So there's an important piece of gear I need fixed. Okay. Uh, oh, my babies! Wow, oh, long time. It's been a minute, Midoriya. How's it going? Oh, the danger sense didn't alert me. What was the danger? A woman's breasts? <laughs> oh, yeah, the fire. The explosion, right. You see, the agency is basically defunct. Much like every other business. The world has come to a crashing halt. Is Hatsume totally unaware of the current state of the country? She's just been in here. Can't we get through one day without the lab exploding? No. I'm in charge of keeping the UA barrier up and running. 
along with research and development. That makes you wonder, I mean, the more people that are involved, the, the more weak links there are. It doesn't necessarily even have to be just one trader. I mean, I know they met in 1A, but it's a big school. I haven't vetted all these people yet for character virtues. It is wild, though, that this school has become the, the line of defense. I haven't seen a high school become this important since Final Fantasy VIII. It's going to lift off the ground and become your airship eventually. Those are completely trash. I'd have to make you new ones from scratch. Sadly, I've got no condenium on hand right now. No babies for you. There it is. I was waiting for the babies. Don't you worry. We can make you new gear. We're Hatsume's classmates. That's extremely kind of you. A tech prodigy like her would these normally jump have a chance to take on difficult projects like these. Yeah, well, what's she working on? Maybe she's got something more important. A flying shelter? Whoa, I just said that. That's Hatsune crazy. That's bizarre. Is it's going to become the airship. The UA Somebody play Final Fantasy VIII. It's Balam Garden all over again. I've said this before, but no one has unique ideas or enthusiasm on par with hers. We've just become mobile. We've accessed the world map. We're in the end game. Like I always say. When I dream up a new baby, I've got to raise it right! She's definitely said that before. That's amazing. The voice acting. I know the messed up situation you heroes are in. <laughs> okay. We're not fighters. She's doing her part. Here. Yeah, that's, why that's we're fine. So many hours that's fine. Our innovations. We're trying to protect people too. It doesn't have to be glamorous to be heroic. These inventions are how the support course does our own hero work. Cool, I love it. I love that she can identify that, and she's so clear about it. Oh. We almost had a moment. She just did that with one hand. I'll bet they're way improved. We just found our measuring tape. <laughs> oh no, man, the legend. I don't know. Do you want to live with someone like this? Do you want to work with someone like this? You learn a lot, but God, what a mountain to climb. There is no big fishing in this small pond. We made it in time. Pieces aren't supposed to implode like that. I heard about the tragedy involving your classmate, but I'm afraid you can't. Wow, they're just to running with this gang. Hope they complete the episode like this. Will Oyama come around? I believe in him. There we go. Hopefully that doesn't backfire on us. It's a gamble, but it will be fine. That's enough yapping for now. <laughs> wow. Listen up. Why do I feel attacked personally? UA High School Hero Course Class 1A. I see you, Mineta. Join the search. All right, output level 100. Time for Genjirate Blood. Aw, Godzilla's on their side. They're very strong. Thanks so much. Oh man, so many characters that I love. What's Mirio doing? The more people who evacuate, the less intel we'll get about the villains. It's a shame. I feel like that's a hero advantage though, no? The villains will not care about collateral damage. The heroes will. Leave it up to just a straight fight. I can feel it in the air. A terrible total war is about to break out in earnest. Again. His confession threw us for a loop. It's only natural that we're second guessing loyalties. Yeah, that could devolve. Endeavor, Genist, and other key heroes are currently in the field, but we'll make sure they stay in the know. Do we not have anyone? I mean, Hawks was our in, right? For a long time. I guess that's done now, we just don't have anyone. Shigaraki and his fiends are out there using my search ability for evil. Oh, yeah. To stop them. Let's begin. What are the important points you mentioned? Hmm. I love those, those tokens. The goal is for us to keep them at least 10 kilometers apart. Consider that the minimum distance we need for us to have a chance. I wonder if this will lead to All Might having some sort of comeback. Dobby's fearsome flame will burn everything in its path. We can't a lot allow him to be on the field. A lot of so really powerful players. There would cripple us. I, I can maybe see where this is going, yeah. <laughs> all for one and Shigaraki, then we'll also have to send Dobby away. I can guess who will fight who too. We must lure out the enemy, divide them, and systematically crush them. Dobby's gonna be Todoroki, probably Endeavor as well. Obviously Deku Shigaraki. Putting in that light, I almost suspect all for one All Might. Oh yeah, also uh, Togo Uraraka. I believe the boy will see the light. Because I have great faith in another person. His homeroom teacher. Shota Aizawa. That's really cool. It's really cool that's how we put it. And also great that it's Aizawa, who always has been shown to be the person for 1A. The difficulty of this kind of choice is that you don't know yet. No one is really wrong. It will just come down to belief. What I'm about to say is going to be more difficult to apply to this show given the stakes and the fact that the stakes are borne by everyone, not just the people making the decision. But in life, when we usually encounter this choice, I think one way to think about it is what are the choices you can make where you'd be okay with being wrong? Or to reframe that, is there a way you could give your best self and do what you think is optimal, allows the greatest potential for good things to happen, while simultaneously accepting what you foresee going wrong. So if you're given the chance to forgive someone or move on or whatever, can you honestly give them a chance? Do you honestly want to give them a chance? Is the optimal solution them learning from their mistakes and doing better? And if they end up repeating the same pattern, what is your game plan for that? I know for sure there is a place where you can have faith in the best, hope for the best, do your best, want the best outcome, but also clearly be aware and therefore insulated of the fact that if you have done all that and the person can 
continues to transgress, that is a sad reflection of their state and not about you. Like there's situations where I would rather do what I feel is right and accept a bad outcome than do what I feel is not optimal to prevent a bad outcome. There can be some pain initially, but I feel like long term, big picture, that's how you sort of develop yourself and walk away really feeling clean and strong and robust. Like I did what I had to do. I was my best self always. If all for one were able to plant a bomb in a person that would explode if they ever betrayed him, he wouldn't have had to make an example out of some pawn by killing them or threaten to murder someone who lied to him. True, he would have just blown him up. He planted a seed of fear in this boy and his parents. Powerful quirk. Hate to tell you this, but you won't make many friends in life who'll stick up for you like your classmates did. Truth. So what are you afraid of? Is it all for one? That's right. But also that I can't twinkle like they do. Yeah, I feel like it's more of the existential pain right now. The harder they try to help, the more less I'm able to believe in myself. <laughs> That's what I was saying, yeah. I get it. Their light casts a very long shadow on Aoyama. They should lock me somewhere without any light. I'll die alone and no one will Also, that's sort of what I was saying, right? It's it's an avoidance of responsibility because it's so terrifying. This won't go away. Aoyama. When you don't want to live this way for the rest of your life. You may not do something be able about to it. Call you way home anymore. Your classmates were being nice about this because they're your friends. You must keep fighting. It's the only option you have. That is true. It's a lifeline. It's your only lifeline. Using you like this may make us no different than all for one. It's not fair, but I won't let you give up. You're not going to just sit around waiting for death, tormented by your coerced actions. I, mean, I'm, I don't think they're using him at all. I don't think they would do it without his consent and choice. In fact, because they're so great, they would understand if he declined. They would just be concerned for him. Also about ripping the fear out at its root. I don't think you can make yourself unafraid, but I think one way through that is you focus on a bigger fear. The point at which Ayama is more afraid of failing his friends and living with this burden the rest of his life than he is of death fighting all for one, which is no small thing, is the second he's fighting to participate. This, I feel, is a very applicable phenomenon. It's why you hear people recommend when goal planning, don't only focus on the, the dreams you have of your ideal future, but focus very clearly and specifically on your biggest fears and what your life would look like if everything went wrong, if you did things totally in the way you know to be terrible for you, followed all your worst impulses, quit on yourself, really heightening the awareness of just how hellish that would be. It makes positive action, difficult positive action, a lot more appealing. Like as I was saying, you're not going to just sit around waiting for death. I'm not going to let you. The things that you really hate, you know, the things that are tormenting you now, do you want this to be your reality forever? Is this it? Is that all you have? Or are you going to do something about it? And that's a dangerous moment too, because often the response to that is the Ayama thing of, oh, I'm just terrible. I'm worthless. See, see what I'm doing. See how I always fail myself. That's got to be pushed against and resisted. It's got to be fought with, with maximum awareness and energy because it will come down to what you do. Even if you have a terrible opinion of yourself, you can prove yourself wrong. It's also like, of course, you have a terrible opinion of yourself now because you've been doing things you feel are terrible until now. So you can begin to build out of that, but like use that force, use the fear of what this is. As long as I'm your homeroom teacher and you in turn are my student, you can rest assured, I have no intention of expelling you from UA. There's also a really helpful element in this, which is that you're not alone. Even though you may be miserable, you're going to stand beside your class like they stood for you. We will protect you. I promise. It's great. It's a great combination of both. You're responsible. You do it. Don't follow this terrible fate. But also, we're, we're here for you. You can lean on us on, in the meantime. The students of UA, the teachers, the pro heroes, everybody. That path ahead of us is a path we'll all walk together. Oh, that's amazing. Beautiful. I forgot to put subtitles on this episode. I'm sorry. I didn't see the episode title. There are no subtitles. Yeah, you can look at it from two different angles. Ayama is what I just said. You can see your future this way, right? Like you just retire into a hole forever hating yourself, forever ruminating in your betrayal while other people are out there fighting for you. You don't want that. From a teacher's perspective or a friend's perspective or whatever, you recognize it's a lot to take on all at once. This person is at the bottom. They don't really have a track record or history, probably, of this kind of thing. Ayama doesn't suddenly snap his fingers and say, I believe in myself now, having never done this. So you take it slowly and easily. I think the direction and the momentum is more important than the absolute state. The more I think about it, the more important I think this is. Where I know for a fact, like the periods that are the, the highest in my life in terms of obje objective measures, things people might point to and be envious of, or I would have been envious of at some point, is not necessarily when I'm in my most heightened state. I think my most heightened state is like the molding of it, the feeling like, oh, I have a grip on things. I'm building something. I'm moving in the right direction. I can see the future. I can see the, the greatness in the horizon. Those are the really thrilling, really alive feeling moments. You can be in a really great place objectively and feel terrible if you feel like you're going backwards or if you 
feel like you don't know how to progress any further. You're just stuck in the same spot. Humans are perhaps forward looking in that way. It's a dumb analogy, but it's kind of like how the, the most enjoyable moment of summer vacation when you're in school is five minutes before the last class ends to start summer break. Doing one thing that feels like it's a reversal of fate that gives you some kind of tactile sense on your own life in a way that's pleasing or is related to reversing a fear, is related to some gain that you really want, something you think is really important, is everything. I mean, it's just evidence that you have direction, you have velocity, right? Even if it's slow. So I think the person helping, their goal is to give the other person, the person suffering, the minimum amount of that that they can be sure to manage at first. Like Oyama, go get Gatorade <laughs> for the training kids, you know? It's just whatever. And then you amp it up, ease into it. And then Oyama will very, very quickly start to feel how good it feels to reverse, finally, you know, after being in this pit of despair for all his life, having just hit the depths of the bottom. It probably would have been a mistake to be like, okay, Oyama, the plan begins, you know, like go over there and lure all for one out. You have to do this because you owe us. That probably would have led to another collapse, especially because Ayama's mind, as people do in these situations, is desperately trying to look for an escape or a way to stay here because even if it's terrible, at least it's comfortable. It's the devil you know. It's easier in a sense, even though I'd argue it's more painful long term, than it would be to like become Deku and friends. So that sort of two part approach, I think by Ozawa nailed it, was genius. Not surprising from Ozawa. <laughs> Did I, I don't know if I was really cognizant of this for this ending. It's all the villains as kids. A lot of them as kids, not just the villains. It reminds me of uh, Attack on Titan. And this story started a long time ago with both their, you know, the greatness of their inspiration from All Might as well as their, their difficulties as children, their respective pain that they've all cho chosen to do something great with, the heroes at least. What are you doing? We should have been gone already. My boy. Right. <laughs> That was a short one. Honestly, I forgot about Shinzo. I could see him being really, really useful. Wow, that would be a cool and long building payoff, his whole introduction.